All right, let's take a look at these practice problems related to black body radiation. All right, the equation that's going to be relevant for most of these questions here is that the peak wavelength, lambda max, peak wavelength of light is given by 0 0.0029 divided by the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so let's take a look. It says, what is the peak wavelength of light coming from a star with a temperature of 5300 Kelvin? Submit your answer in nanometers. Okay, so then let's plug this in here. We know then that the temperature is 5300 Kelvin. And that's the only variable we need, right? So we can find the peak wavelength, lambda max equals 0 0.0029 divided by 5300. Okay, I'm going to put that in a calculator. 0 0.0029 divided by 5300. And I get 5.47 E minus 7. So this is 547 times 10 to the minus 7. Oh, 5.47, that's really important. 5.47 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now, what's tricky about these problems in part is dealing with scientific notation. So when you have a, a number in scientific notation like this and we're told we want these in nanometers, I have to move the decimal place. So this is times 10 to the 7 but I want my answer to be in nanometers, which is times 10 to the negative 9. To get to there, I need to move the decimal to the right however many times, um, like for each, for each increment of this exponent. So to go from negative 7 to negative 8, I would move it one spot over. And to go from negative 8 to negative 9, I would move it another spot over. So this would become 547 times 10 to the negative 9. That'd be the same number. Okay, and, and the more experience you have with scientific notation, that may or may not make sense to you. But um, the way I would show that, and I won't do this for every problem, but I'll do it here, is that the way you would write this out as a decimal is it would actually be 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, and then 5, 4, 7. All right, and that's why when I say 5.47, okay, it's times 10 to the negative 7, right? There's, because I'd have to move the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places. But if I move it 9 places, that would be moving it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it's 547 times 10 to the negative 7. So you see it's the same number, I'm just choosing how to display the scientific notation part. Okay, that's why I can just move the decimal place. So the answer in this case will be 547 nanometers. Let's take a look at the next one. You'll start to see roughly the scale that these answers should be in, right? Um, and like with other problems before, I'm not asking you, I, I've set up these questions so that your answer will, will never require you to enter your answer in scientific notation. It'll, it'll always be um, a relatively normal sized number, okay? Between a few hundred up to maybe a few thousand, okay? It's not gonna be insanely big or insanely small. So let's look at the next one. So lambda, again, equals 0 0.0029 divided by t. And in this case, t equals 2,500. So it's really the exact same problem, just with different values. Um, so let's solve for lambda. It's going to be 0 0.0029 divided by 2,500 which in this case is 0 0.0029 divided by 2500 equals, um, what do we have here? 
So now it didn't give it to me in scientific notation. It's giving it to me as a decimal. So let me just write out this decimal and then we'll figure out what that is. So one, two, three, four, five zeros to the right of the decimal. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, one, six. So this is 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 1, 6. Now I have to figure out what this is in nanometers. So I'm going to move the decimal nine places to the right, because this is meters. So then it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now notice I had to go one extra place past the 6. And whenever you go an extra place, you can just add another zero. So, so if I had to add, if I had to keep going even further, I could just keep adding more and more zeros. That's not changing the number, right? It's just changing the units of the number, like how, how you know, I moved it right to nanometers. So what I would say is this is then, if I'm if I'm moving this to nanometers, I have moved the decimal place. To right here from there to there in which case the number has become one one six zero so this is the same as saying one one six zero nanometers again because I moved the decimal nine places to the right okay I hope that makes some sense one one six zero nanometers. Although again, you're not putting the units, you're just putting the value. Now one thing I hope you notice, well you don't have to notice this, but it's a, it's a way to check your answer, is that as an object gets colder, so notice it went from 5300 down to 2500, what happened to the wavelength? The wavelength got longer, it got more red as it got colder. Um, and that's what happens, right? When an object's really, really hot, it gets blue hot, as it gets colder and colder, it gets redder and redder. Okay, so that's a way to check to check your answer. This is in the infrared part of the spectrum, beyond what our eyes can see, which is what happens when you have cooler objects. All right, let's look at question three, which is, um, and you'll notice that the answer again is is in that ballpark we would expect, right? Of a few hundred to a few thousand. Okay, the temperature now it's asking us. So we have the same equation, lambda equals 0 0.0029 divided by temperature. But now it's asking us for the temperature of the star if the peak wavelength is 429 nanometers. Okay, so now I know lambda is 400, oops, is 425, sorry, nanometers. And I have to find the temperature. Temperature equals question mark. So that means I have to do some algebra, right, to get to solve for temperature. So let's rearrange this equation to solve for temperature. So to get it by itself, temperature by itself, I need to multiply both sides by temperature. Uh, I do times T and times T. That cancels it out on this side. And I would have T times lambda equals 0 0.0029. And then to get temperature by itself, I would divide both sides by lambda. Okay, and it cancels out there. And so this is the equation, the sort of the alternate version of the equation. That again, if you want, you could put right on your equation sheet that if you need to solve for temperature, it would be that temperature equals 0 0.0029 divided by lambda. But keep in mind, this lambda, it has to be in units of meters. And we're given the wavelength in nanometers. And we're told, remember, that 425 nanometers means times 10 to the negative 9. So as we solve this problem, we'd have to write it like this. The temperature equals 0 0.0029 divided by, I'm going to put this whole thing in parentheses, 425 times 10 to the negative 9. We're doing real science here, people. This is like real math and science. It's not easy. Okay, here we go. So 0 
divided by, and I'm going to use parentheses to make sure that everything is on the denominator here, parentheses, 4 to 5 times 10 to the 9 negative, close parentheses. And then don't forget, enter. Okay, whenever you're using those parentheses, if you're doing it on a calculator like this, you gotta hit enter at the end. And what do I get? This is a good check. I get a number that looks kind of like the other numbers I've seen for temperature, right? It's not like it's a super, super tiny number like 0 0.00521, and it's not like a billion trillion. It's in the order of a few hundred to a few thousand. So what do I have? 6823. 6823, and that should be my temperature in Kelvin. So it's always a good check that you've done something right, is if the number's in the right ballpark. Okay, let's take a look at the next two questions. Okay, question four. Star A is three times hotter than star B. How many times brighter is star A than star B? Okay, so now we're dealing with uh, temperature, hotter, and brightness. So we need a new equation here. And the equation we need is this one. E, which is again our brightness, the intrinsic brightness of a star, is equal to sigma times t to the fourth. And as you'll see in all throughout, throughout our practice problems and in the quizzes, is, is we'll only do these kind of problems as ratio problems. And what that means is that this constant sigma, even though I provide it to you in the equation sheet, it's not something you'll even use. The brightness is proportional to temperature to the fourth power. So just like with our problems we did before, we could write this as, as a, in words, okay? Pr brightness goes as temperature to the fourth, okay? Or we could use, um, or you could use the equation. Now even though I have this proportional sign, again, I kind of use that interchangeably with an equal sign if I'm doing a ratio problem. Keep in mind these ratio problems are whenever you're talking about something being this many times bigger or brighter or hotter. When you have that word times, that's when we kind of substitute into this ratio problem mode. Okay, so this is a case where A is three times hotter than B. So I like to think about it in terms of this. Okay, look, it's three times hotter. That's the temperature. If it's three times hotter, how many times brighter is it? Well, that's going to be three raised to the power of four. Okay, so raising something to the power of four makes it pretty significant. So three raised to the power of four, enter, is 81. It's a huge difference in brightness when you increase the temperature. Right, so three to the power of four equals 81. And so yes, it will be 81 times brighter. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Star A is 200 times brighter than star B. How many times hotter is star A than star B? Okay, so this is a case, I'm gonna again go to this version of the relationship. Brightness goes as temperature to the fourth. It's 200 times brighter. So how has the temperature changed? All right, well, you know, I, I could do this with this relationship or I could do this with, with the equation. I, I guess I'll do the equation. So um, in this case, then I would say E equals 200. That's my brightness. And T is what I'm trying to solve for. So if I'm starting with this equation or relationship, E goes as T to the fourth, I need to get T by itself, the temperature by itself to solve for that. How do you undo something raised to the power of four? How do you get rid of that? Well, the algebra here is that you have to take the fourth root of it, okay? So what I would do is take the fourth root of both sides. Not something we do very often, the fourth root. Now taking the fourth root, there's no button for that on your calculator, I'm guessing. Um, this equation then becomes the fourth root of brightness equals the temperature. So
So, but you might recall from earlier examples that raising something to a power like this, like, like uh, taking the fourth root, would be the same as raising it to the power of one over four. We saw that before when we were taking the third root of something. So another way to write this whole equation, sorry, I've got so many equations written here, would be to say the temperature change is related to the change in brightness raised to the one fourth power. That's the square root. So if you were gonna pick an equation to add to your equation sheet, this might be one that you would consider when you need to solve for temperature given the brightness um, this is the relationship. So in doing this I would plug in the temperature is going to become 200, this was 200 times brighter raised to the power of 4, I'm sorry, the power of 1 fourth, so 200 to the power of, and you could use parentheses and, and do 1 fourth, or you just say well 1 fourth is 0 0.25, it's a quarter here. And so what does this become? 3.76. So the temperature must be 3.76 times bigger. 3.76. Okay, it's tricky stuff, um, but I hope these examples help help make good sense to you.